Hey, Brooke Drum here with a long awaited update. So I always like to say I'm still alive, I'm not dead, um, but it's been far too long. And I talked to Bill this last week and uh, he gave me some good advice. Dude, post an update. My gosh, it's been far too long. And to be honest, it's a little embarrassing, but I want to tell it in story form, just to give you a little background of what has gone on the past, believe it or not, it's been about three years since PrinterBot closed. And I thought we were going to open last year, but you know what? The world got nuts. So here's where I've been, but I wanted to just say up front, because I think the question that a lot of you are asking is, where's my printer? Why did you take my money if you haven't delivered my printer? When are you going to deliver it? And you're all correct in thinking those questions. So I've got uh, an answer for you right now, right at the front of this video. I don't know, but hopefully soon. One thing that I've learned is I don't know what I don't know. So uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that's, that's happened in, in the last three years. Essentially, you know, when uh, PrinterBot hit the ground, and I walked away from the crash. You know, a good crash is one you walk away from. Uh, I had a little bit of money, and we kept things alive in California, but eventually we moved to Kansas. And, you know, PrinterBot cut its teeth on printers like this, inexpensive printers. And there was a little bit of money while I, you know, closed down the business and everything, but that took time. Moving took time. It was painful. This was the last printer uh, that I made at PrinterBot. You see how they look similar? When we closed, uh, I met a guy that had been buying, uh, had bought this printer before and liked it and wanted me to help him build another printer. So the question became, how do I pay my bills? And that is over here. So the first thing that I did is, you know, I sold the rest of these just as kids and whatnot. I think I ended up giving away a bunch of these. Um, like maybe dozens and dozens and dozens and just you know I felt bad I wanted to like you know I can't uh, remake all of these printers in my garage in, in California so I, I set those aside gave them away or whatever you probably see some of these online some guy got them I don't know but Brent showed up uh, additive manufacturing or additive America uh, they manufacture uh, 3d printed parts with the HP jet fusion or fusion jet and uh, cool guy, cool business. He wanted, uh, he's a prosthetist, or I don't even know if I'm saying that right. He does prosthetics and has a real heart for kids in Guatemala. And you know, I'm that kind of guy, I like kids. Uh, and uh, I, I've always been fascinated with the fact that 3D printing, what a good fit when you have one person that needs a unique limb and so you're going to make one custom thing for one person and then they're going to grow and do another, you know, you're going to reiterate and do another one as their body changes. So fascinating. I was all in. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't tons of money, but it was enough to pay my bills. So I ended up doing what is called the OP Pro. And it's really in the line of the simple. Um, you know, we did some tall ones. This is even taller. Uh, over the years, I've tried round bars and, you know, linear rails and stuff. This is kind of a hybrid of that and so we're just now push, pushing the finishing touches on this and it's it's got about 10 out in the wild and we're about to finalize everything and then that will have just you know a little bit of side income but that's not what I can do forever so I knew I needed to do another printer so I'll tell you about Plybot next right about the same time I was getting rolling with the OP Pro uh, printer Plybot came along and you know you can go to the Kickstarter page uh, you can go to Plybot uh, their website and kind of see some of the history of that and I don't want to bore you because we're trying to get to print about right but uh, I started to work on this printer now that was a very long road that took a couple of years because there were a couple of designs that we were weighing uh, one was this parallel scara arm it's this funky a uh, fascinating way of doing a printer, Josh's idea. And I came on board to do the design and some engineering and stuff. Well, that company was a complete and total godsend to us as a family uh, because just recently it started paying the bills. And now it's funny when you're down, and I mean with COVID and all of this, 
it's been a rough year, but I don't want any sympathy. I'm just saying like, this is what provided for me day to day. And so we are thankful to the good Lord, honestly, for providing uh, this company uh, to do something that's really difficult, really fun, and kind of fascinating. I mean, I, you know me, I love, uh, if you know me, you know I love challenges. And this has been a real challenge. During this time in America, it is hard to get parts. Um, you know, where I used to just go to China and get stuff. This is really trying to be uh, completely sourced here in America. Now, there's a couple of exceptions, but so it's made in the USA, which I love. That's what I did with Printabot. Uh, OP Pro is the same way. We really believe in making it in America. So um, the values aligned. Uh, it was a challenge. It was interesting. And again, thank God it's paying the bills. So I had to put Printabot aside for a little while because you got to go to where the heat is where you know the provision is and so plybot is getting very close um still some challenges uh, we got ulta machine doing the electronics he does the ele electronics for prusa um you know brian who used to work with me on the tv show really helped me get over the uh, edge with uh you know the hump with these parts and now we're just trying to get the cost down so this will see the light of day very soon but now it's like my time is freeing up because I'm about to pass this on to manufacturing. And so now what? A printer bot. That's what we're going to get to. I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, I can't talk about the new printer bot without talking about where I've been here. This uh, rusty one over there was the plus. And I like the design because it was just kind of a monolithic brick, you know, very simple form. And I kind of fell in love with those round edges. So this was the first iteration me and Bill did in my garage. So don't judge. Uh, you know, Harbor Freight doesn't give you the best equipment. <laughs> but we made this one kind of as a proof of concept. And it proved out some of the ideas were good. Some were bad. And the bad idea was doing it in my garage. <laughs> so this kind of made me realize, okay, we got to get some professionals to build that. So. Um, I went on to make some changes. So after seeing this, you know, there's progressively getting bigger. Um, this is uh, one of two here that are, should be the, the right size for what we want to release. And I've gone back and forth on this a little bit, but after living with this design a little bit, these rounded edges actually bring cost that don't really need to be in here. Um, because it's a little bit harder. I tried to get uh, local shops to bend these corners and I mean I, I did a couple of shops here. I went to multiple shops here and in Wichita, Kansas there's a lot of aerospace stuff and airplanes and they're busy and they don't want to do work for onesie twosie so it kind of set me back to figuring out where can I do this. I tried uh, Send Cut Send and they don't do these rounded edges. Now, I have the play here. This was back in Printabot days because we decided, you know, let's make it inexpensive. Let's just do 90 degree corners. So that is ultimately where we're going to end up. Uh, these rounded corners are not going to last. Um, it's much easier to do 90 degree bends. It saves cost. Um, it's just every bit as rigid. So that's one change you'll see from the models I'll show you today to the final model um, because it's just easier to manufacture. So anyway, I'll get some of these out of the way and we'll transition over to the other one. All right, the Printabot Pro. So uh, I told you there'll be squared corners, um, but it'll be the same size here. And we're going with Microform Precision in Sacramento, so it'll be the same shop that did my old printer bots. I just trust them, they do great work. That's where we're gonna start. Um, this machine, you know, back in Printabot days, uh, the early Printabot, um, I did what I wanted to do. And I kind of told you, if you want to do something else, you're on your own. Well, this company is really going to be targeted towards, not like Plybot, because that's kind of a uh, consumer printer with an app and like easy to use. This is totally hackable, totally hackable. So here's how we've uh, made this machine hackable. First off, uh, this is the bottom electronics, and if you've seen some of my other printers in the past, whoops, um, you know that uh, 
I used to stuff wires into the bottom and not put a bottom on it and like all kinds of crazy stuff. But this will be, you know, sealed into the bottom. This is 24 volts instead of 12. Um, this is what we're starting with. This is a big tree tech board, five steppers, uh, drivers. Um, it can do a lot and there's a screen. You can kind of see that screen up here. But as I developed this, I realized, you know what? People aren't gonna like for me to make the decisions for them on the electronics, the screen, even the extrusion system. So I've really tried to make this totally, uh, you know, you can do, and I encourage you to do what you want to with this machine. So there's plenty, you can see there's plenty of room down here. There's actually room for Raspberry Pi, any size. I've fit the Duet in here. I've fit, uh, I've got a, uh, you know, one of the Prusa boards, old printer bot, like anything will fit down here. So you get to choose what you want. Now, they are going to ship with this board, but I just want you to know if you have a different idea, um, you can do it. So there's plenty of room on the bottom. Now, another thing about this is you'll see here, we've gone through a bit of a journey with the 3D Chameleon. So if you haven't checked out uh, Bill Steele's website, 3D Chameleon, go Google it, look it up. But it allows you to do more than one color, which totally intrigues me. He's had these injection mold moldings done. It's uh, flexible. Uh, you know, you can do two into one, four into one. It's pretty neat. So it uh, used to be, this is the old system, and so that's where we started with this. And, you know, you had a couple of these. These are, you've seen this style before. But anyway, so since then, it's improved. Let me put this aside. And now we're on to, uh, it looks the same here, but on the back, I'll just spin it around. This is one compact unit, and it has two, uh, you know, step, steppers. And one selects this crazy system <laughs> to uh, select which filament is going to be put forward. So four colors. And... As I got this on here, I realized, uh, you know, with all of the tubes coming up here, it's going to get in the way, so we're going to have to move this over. But uh, we'll find a good place for this over on the side. It's already done in the drawing, and now even more metal, but that's okay, because um, we want to know, you know, how to make it better. Now, this is four colors, and you don't have to do that. Uh, turn this back around. I just mocked this up. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute, but this is a direct drive system. So this does do direct drive if you want to. It even has the, I'll just take this out if I can. Got caught. Um, there's enough room on here to do two, and I have a new version of this, that if you want to do two uh, drives here, you give up some space. But that's an option. And by the way, that's way off on the edge. Um, it's not something I want to uh, ship with, but it's something to play with if you're interested in IDEX. But this uh, carriage does fit a direct drive. But of course, this is a Bowden tube system, so you won't have a motor here. So it'd be nice and light um, for this carriage. So I wanted all of these options to work because it's a DIY printer. And what I mean is it's for the maker community and professionals that want any material. So I said any material and I made Bill very nervous right off the bat because um, I do need to qualify that. Some material um, really needs an enclosed chamber. So that material that requires an enclosed chamber is going to need you to get an, an enclosed chamber on your own or wait a while until we come out with the printer that has an enclosed chamber, which I'm na making no predictions on, but all I'm saying is this uh, is the hot end that does now exist. Uh, a couple of years ago, it didn't. This is the 20, let's see if I can read the code on here. This is the 24 volt, uh, 90 watt hot end that Carl made, Ubis Technologies, and it does have the ceramic uh, tip, which is comparable to the ruby tip. Um, it's less money than all of that. And some people have said, why are you going with an old school, you know, kind of design? 
because it's the right price and it works really well. So this also has a PT-1000 in it, so the temperature is really... So that exists, and all of these are in, in a box right here, so I have all of these, no more waiting. So that's real. Um, Bill's new system is real, and it has electronics now, so it's getting more and more refined, 3D Chameleon. So that's good. Uh, any electronics will fit in here. This is the last thing, or there's two other things. One is that you can see this panel I made this removable. So this just unbol unbolts with four bolts, and I have different um, options because some people, you know, you like what you like. So some people like, you know, this click wheel thing and they want their own electronics, that's fine. Uh, I don't like this personally. Um, I think Bill likes this because it's in the Prusas and it does work well, um, but I don't like this. Uh, different sizes of touch screens, you know, I can do just a flat panel for any of these. This is actually an interesting one. I think this is the one. You can actually put a Raspberry Pi touchscreen on this thing and run the Octo Print or whatever. It'll mount up here. It's really big. So the, the faceplate, uh, I'd be willing to do whatever faceplate you want. It's really simple. Uh, or give you the file so you can do your own. But any, any of these uh, options will do because you know over the last three years, a lot has changed in 3D printing. So we're gonna change with you. Now, the, the last cool thing about this um, that I'm not even gonna show you right now, but I'll, sh I'll just turn around and show you what's cool. When you go to make a 3D printer, uh, you know, shipping a box for this could be this wide, but because of this bed, it's this wide, way bigger. So this whole bed comes off. I don't really have a demo for you. This comes off and bolts to these four right here. Just how it is here, it folds up, bolts here, and only sticks out about that much. So the whole thing, whether you're traveling with it, this literally fits into, it's a large piece of luggage, but you could put it into luggage. Um, there's cases that fit this size, and so traveling with this could be cool. As a guy that traveled all over the place with his printers, um, this is a, it's a niche, I know, you don't have to use it because it works anyway. I just added four bolts back here and made sure all the geometry works so you can travel with it. And I'll be able to ship it to you cheaper. Um, so anyway, that's the main things about this. Now, the, the last thing that's really, I've lost sleep over this one. In that red machine, uh, we had linear rails on the edges. And man, when you, I, I thought I was gonna weld all the case together and it was gonna be nice and strong. Well, that was stupid because I found out that it's very hard to weld without the heat of the welding and all kinds of jigging and stuff, the metal moves. And so what I've opted instead is to go back to the throwback of the plus. We're doing round rods, because you don't need anything but. And it's way more adjustable, so uh, this whole case comes apart now with screws. You'll see there's screws everywhere some mistakes but anyway these screws will put it together and so we'll be able to uh, just bolt it together align everything bolt it and you can adjust it instead of it's set in stone if I got it wrong you'll never fix it so anyway it's just a little I think it would be easier to go to, to round rods so that's why this metal is missing and my gantry is all apart because I'm not doing linear rails on the side now if you think that's not as good well you're probably wrong, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing, I know that. So it'll just be easier to live with, easier to build. And I think we're gonna end up with a great printer here. So when, I don't know, but I do know I'm gonna be working on this, I don't wanna say every day, cause that'd probably be a lie, but uh, often, 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 because this has really got to be something that, I'm ashamed of myself in one way, that I haven't shipped these yet, but it, the, what did we sell, like 20, 15, something like that, not a ton. Um, but it was really fans and wonderful people like you that decided to support me to get me back in business. And I'm so grateful we're moving forward. Uh, you know, there's t-shirts out there that say 2021, <laughs> or 2020, what was it? Was it 2020? Yeah, yeah, burn those, because it didn't happen. <laughs> Now it's 2021, 
And uh, that's when this company is going to finally start shipping machines. So when, not exactly sure, but I am excited about putting my full attention on this until we're finished and shipping. And I do have, I mentioned Brent uh, back at the beginning of the video, still intend for Brent and Additive uh, America to be uh, manufacturing these. I got to do the first ones. So the first ones will come from me. And then once everything is vetted and, and set in stone, we'll pass it to him to assemble. So I'm excited. Uh, it's been a hot mess, but that's kind of me. Uh, just wanted to be honest with you guys, tell you about the delays, where I've been, where we're going. Um, if you've got questions, I'll make sure to go into the website, make sure it's a little bit updated so you can contact me through a contact form or it's brooke at printabot.com. Uh, if you've got questions, fine. I'm not giving any of these away. I'm not giving any to uh, you know reviewers, none. Uh, these are going to the sweet people that supported me. And by the way, if you do, if you're nervous and this whole thing just makes you nervous, I don't really blame you. Um, but we will refund your money. I have not spent this money. Uh, we've paid taxes, <laughs> but uh, this money is not what I'm living on. I was hoping we'd sell enough to live on and it would be like, hey, we can go full steam. That wasn't the case. So it's going to be a slow start, but and it has been. But the money is there if you want a refund. I don't blame you at all. I'll do it immediately. It does take a few days for that to process. We had one a couple of weeks ago ask for a refund and no problems at all. So that's fine. We're going forward with or without you, but we're so glad you're here. Thanks for bearing with me on this crazy uh, ride that we've been on. Um, but there it is, a real update. Now you know all the secrets, where I've been, what I'm doing, and where we're going. You still have a, I don't know is the real answer you were looking for, but uh, I'm putting myself out there in the crosshairs and we're going to get this thing done. So thanks.